Hello everyone and welcome to Jojomas Day 6, where today we will be talking about the main antagonist of Part 6 Stone Ocean, Enrico Pucci. So I've been wearing this uh, NASA hat for the past few days of Jojomas here, but it finally fits now because we're talking about Part 6 and space kind of go together. But anyways, let's get on to Pucci. So Pucci in many ways is essentially the successor to Dio Brando, carrying on his mission of attaining heaven, or essentially the perfect stand, going through the necessary steps that were written in Dio's journal to achieve the ultimate goal of heaven. And recently on YouTube, there's been a lot of people making some really good videos about heaven and explaining it well, because I will admit, my first time reading Stone Ocean, I barely understood what the concept of heaven was until the final, you know, you know, 15 chapters it felt, it felt like. So uh, for anyone who's looking for more uh, information on heaven itself, pretty much Every other uh, YouTuber that talks about JoJo has made a video on it except for me, so I'll link those down below. But anyway, so the overall goal of attaining heaven and as well as taking on some burdens uh, of the Brando bloodline, like the rivalry against the Joestar bloodline. As, you know, Pucci's main, you know, main roadblock in part six is uh, Joestar bloodline being... Uh, Jolene and her friends as well as Jotaro. And although Enrico Pucci is the successor to Dio, you would think their characters would sort of be similar, but they're really not, and that's why Dio really liked Pucci. When they first met each other, Pucci was a very impressionable, very young priest, and you know, he met this, this person who he viewed as essentially a god, able to heal him and fixed his, uh, I believe uh, Pucci had like a cleft foot, uh, something with his uh, toes and Pucci just or in, and Dio just fixed it on the spot reasons unexplained I guess uh, and that started the whole theory of huh maybe Dio has every stand from the Joestar bloodline he has crazy diamond that's why he was able to fix Pucci's leg um, no it was just never explained you know it is explained actually Dio is God Dio is able to do anything but anyways um, Pucci is exposed to Dio in this environment being a young priest very impressionable and he, he meets this person that essentially is a god and, you know, I can sort of align with Pucci's reasoning there to want to be on his side. And Pucci has done a lot for Dio, or Dio has done a lot for Pucci. Especially when we see back in his flashback how Pucci, uh, I keep mixing up their names, damn it. How Dio grants Pucci with White Snake with a stand, he pierces him with the arrow. Or he sort of, you know, uh, the arrow was gravitated towards Pucci, and Pucci was so infatuated with Dio, I guess, and he viewed him as as a, a god and he he saw Dio pierce him with the arrow although Dio wasn't essentially there Dio saw it as like you know god giving him a, a, a gift which was white snake so um Pucci loves Dio and Dio has done a lot for Pucci and I can see why they have such a close relationship uh the reason why Dio loves Pucci so much is because they're so different in a way but because uh Pucci is able to build so much trust with Dio as we see, everyone's like, why wasn't uh, Vanilla Ice, you know, you know, Dio's immediate successor? He was so obsessed with him, but it's the reason why Pucci would disagree with Dio and why they weren't exactly the same, why Dio liked him so much. As we saw in their flashbacks, a lot of the time when Dio would go off on his big tangents, Pucci would disagree and interject and, you know, question Dio's motives, which Dio was totally unused to, uh, being, you know, having the most powerful stand in the world, actually the world, uh, as well as you know, being an immortal vampire and everything, everyone looked up to him. Although Pucci did look up to him, he was also able to treat him like a human in a way and disagree with him and talk to him like an actual friend. So for a lot of reasons, Dio and Pucci have a pretty beautiful relationship and uh, they have really great chemistry together and they make a re really great pairing as characters. So there's a lot of reasons to like Pucci and there's a lot of reasons to dislike him. Pucci, I never see him as a lot of people's favorite villain, but he's never the least favorite either. He's sort of always in that middle point. And I feel like we saw a lot of Pucci in Part 6. We definitely did. Probably the most out of any villain. Maybe not Funny Valentine. Funny Valentine was probably close to how much we saw Pucci just because of Steel Ball Run's length. But throughout the entirety of Stone Ocean, I feel like Pucci was involved in a lot of arcs. I mean, he even, he had so many fights. He had his fight with Foo Fighters, his fight with Jolene. That wasn't even the final fight. And then we had the main fight with Sea Moon and everything, and that made it heaven. It's just Pucci was a big deal in Stone Ocean and sort of the complete antithesis of Diablo, where we barely saw any of them, Pucci was in the forefront, involved in a lot of arcs. I mean, he was in the Heavy Weather arc, he was in the Underworld arc, he was in Bohemian Rhapsody to a certain extent. It's just Pucci was everywhere in Part 6, and I feel like this gave us a... It gave us an opportunity to get his his get to know his character so well, almost like we would know a main cast member, like uh, you know a main JoJo or a Joe Bro or something like that. So, and that can be looked at as one of his strengths. Personally, I liked that change up of seeing the, uh, the the enemy, the main villain throughout the part so much. I mean, in it, like just more examples, even in the beginning when we were introduced to Weather Report, White Snake was always active and White Snake was always around. 
uh, doing things even before we were even revealed to Poochie or Poochie was the stand user. So I really like that about Poochie's character, although some people might not, how involved he was in the overall story. Um, but now getting on to least favorite and favorite moment from Enrico Pucci. Both of these are not exactly a specific moment, more so traits from his character. So let's start off with favorite moment or favorite thing about Pucci. So when it comes to Enrico Pucci, he was a very smart character. He knew what he was doing and he knew how to achieve his goal and he was very realistic about things. If you go look at other villains like Cars, Dio and everything and their cockiness and their ego, uh, Pucci is sort of the complete opposite of that. Pucci was really smart and he was carrying out his goals in a logical way and that's why we see him get the furthest out of any villain. He accomplishes his goal, he attains heaven and he gets made in heaven. It's, it's because Pucci was so smart and it's kind of, I think that's why we, he was so different from every other villain. You know, compare him to part 3 Dio, how part 3 Dio was just like, stand user, the stand user has been defeated, send another send another and then and then 30 times send another but Pucci we saw active in all of these fights and and Pucci knew when to get involved and when to stop certain people and that's why I think he was so different I keep saying a lot but Pucci was a smart character and he wasn't like all the other villains he knew when he needed to get involved and he knew when it was best to to not and uh that was a really strong part of his character and I thought it changed things up a bit and it's what I liked about him he was very intelligent. And in the end, his planning and perseverance ended up with him winning, essentially. Kind of getting cheesed over by Emporio at the end, but uh, he attained Made in Heaven. He killed the main cast. He reset the universe. And um, he had the perfect stand. He, he attained Heaven. He went through all the steps. And it's just like, God, throughout the entire part, Pucci just kept winning and winning and winning. And once you get to the end, it's like, okay, how are they going to defeat this guy? And they ultimately don't. Except for Emporio, kind of does. But that's kind of weird, too, because I thought you couldn't use two stands at once, but... Burning down the house was activated and you know, weather report was going on, but that sort of goes into my least favorite moment. And my least favorite thing about Pucci is White Snake. Out of all of the stands in JoJo, and out of all of the things we'd see stands do, White Snake by far is the most cheese ability in the series. I felt like every time we saw it, it was just coming up with bullshit that it could do. It was the most inconsistent stand, and it had the most random abilities that just were so specific to the situation. I felt like Araki just kept coming up with more random things for White Snake to do, um, you know, just to make him feel like a really powerful ability and just a really powerful enemy. But it, oh my god, it's just. White Snake pisses me off, dude. It did so much random shit. Like, I mean, at the end, when when P Pucci had Made in Heaven, somehow the discs are still active. Like, although White Snake isn't even manifested as a stand anymore, but all of the stand discs uh, still exist and are able to be used, even though the discs are like part of White Snake's ability. I don't know, man. That stand can just do literally anything, and it's annoying. Like, at one point, Pucci's like, I took out a specific stand disc for my eyeballs. It's like, okay, now your ability's just soft and wet, and you're able to take away properties from things in the form of discs. And then at another time, he was able to create the illusions to the point where uh, White Snake is able to manifest himself as Weather Report, and it's just bullshit, 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 dude. So that's not so much Pucci's character, but just something I was so annoyed at throughout Part 6, and a lot of other people were too, how it's just, God... White Snake is such a BS stand. Um, but getting onto Poochie's actual character, one thing I really disliked about him was uh, using religion as an excuse for do for doing evil things and being a bad person. It's similar to a lot of the other villains in the series, like Funny Valentine, how they they would think in their head that their goal is just and that their mission is for the greater good, and uh, they're willing to kill people and do bad things and you know murder innocent people in order to attain that goal. But Pucci is much worse than anyone else in the series because he's using God and a religion as an excuse for his actions. So that I can't get down with, and that's why Pucci is more so towards the bottom of my favorite villain list, because he doesn't really have a unique goal to himself, it's more so carrying out Dio's mission. So that's what I got for Enrico Pucci. I feel like this was a really quick day, I got everything I need to say about him out of the way. And that rhymed, hey, hey, hey. But anyways, I apologize if I sounded a bit illiterate today. I feel like back in my head now, I'm thinking like, huh, maybe I should re-record this. I messed up a lot there. But anyways, whatever. I don't care. I'm, I'm done with Poochie now. I'm just one step closer to Funny Valentine tomorrow, guys. I can't wait. I'm probably going to end up recording the video on the same day here because it's pretty early. So I have some time to do some stuff, you know, before Christmas. I'm not overloaded recording Joe Jomas videos on Christmas Day and, uh, and Christmas Eve. Sometimes these are pre-recorded. But anyways, guys, thank you all for watching this episode of Joe Jomas. I will see you all tomorrow for the best villain, Funny Valentine. All right, guys, thank you all for watching. I love you all. All right, guys? I just do the butterfly from, uh, from Napoleon Dynamite. Anyway, I'm done. Bye.